Boom, boom, boom. Grabando, grabando. Fincas, grabando. Hoy, a uh, special episode because I'm interviewing somebody who not solamente is a musician, but also someone who I consider as an observer of the scene, como que está pendiente lo que está pasando. And uh, it's a good advocate for it, por lo que veo. Oh, so it's a good balance between the artist and musician. So the artist, musician, and fan, my bad. Charlie HC or Charlie Hardcore, I assume? HC, HC. HC? Not HC, HC, yeah. Oh, okay, awesome. So, que la que bro, todo bien? Yeah, all good. Este, it's, a, it's a hot day. But besides that, all good. Got off work earlier. Um, I'm selling, I was like driving around selling things because I'm a... Uh, Uh, I recently got accepted to a master's degree um, in New Orleans, so I have to literally sell everything I own uh, oh, so I can so I can book a flight in May. So thing is, but trying to like like get a few creative odds and ends out of the way before I do that. Also, nice, nice. So, primero, congrats on the masters. Y segundo, en qué sería the subject? Uh, architecture. Oh shit. Ar Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been a long dream of mine to like study architecture. Um, right now I'm, I'm a teacher and that's what my undergrad was. Um, it was in uh, English education, but I already, I knew that wasn't like my passion, but it was just kind of like a way to get out of the house. So I kind of took a huge detour um, and it was worth it because I was in like, I didn't have the skills to put together a portfolio um, or even like, you know, like catch anyone's attention. I don't think maybe I was, I'm wrong, but uh, in the end it worked out because I did get accepted. So. Super nice, super nice. Damn, dude. Como I met my abuelo when I was in my undergrads. I had met this girl called Alejandra, a good friend. And she went from ingeniería mecánica or something towards arte plástica. Okay. So como que not a complete, como que 180, but it feels kind of. I, I say, it, o sea, como que en los ojos de la sociedad, right? Like, tenemos yeah. como que los lo hard sciences or the STEM field mm -hmm. on, a, on a pedestal and then like the, the performing arts or the plastic arts are kind of like second bananas. Yeah, yeah. Um, pero, yeah, I mean, dude, like we're kids when we go into college and we, just, we have to do this shit, you know, we have to like pick a major. So, como que it's, I'm surprised that everyone doesn't end up changing their major, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like people who go in like and they know what they want, super blessed man, power to them. I'm verdad. I'm verdad que sí. I'm verdad que sí. So at the beginning, I talked a little bit about you, but if you were to present yourself in a more, I guess, professional way as a musician and a fan of the scene, what else would you say? I don't know, man. I feel like I don't, I don't think it's fair to say that I'm, I'm pretty hip to what's going on. I wish I was, I feel that's like super important um, to like, I'm really interested in like how we can make our, our scene like más saludable y más conectado y, y, y que tenga mejor liderazgo, but I don't really know if I personally embody the traits I think we all should. Um, but I'm like, in terms of like, I guess the question is like what my place is, my role is in, in the community or the scene. Yeah. Or what else? Is that you... kind of the question? Or what else could you add to what, what I, I mentioned add? earlier? Um, I don't know. I'm, I mean, like, I guess I'm just mostly known for my music. I'm just kind of a dude. I go sometimes and play with my band. Um, and when I'm done, I usually go home because I'm a teacher and I sleep early. So I'm usually sleepy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not the most, I'm not the most exciting or fun guy at, at the shows. But um, yeah, I'm just some dude. <laughs> I doodle. I make music. Uh, I... I a, uh, I I want to see the scene grow and, and get better and I put in my little piece how I can according to my strengths and weaknesses. Super nice, super nice. Yeah, you don't feel like we're both on the same page for that. Yeah, so, dude, no, and thank you, man. And like, I feel like everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, right? And then you, what you're doing is like, you're like highlighting the people in the community and that's super important because otherwise, like, Like, I wouldn't know about half the people you've interviewed, you know, and, you know, like moving forward, that's, that's super essential, you know, like just to know where all the players are and who everyone is and how we can network and communicate, you know, like, Ante, if I didn't know someone, 
then that wasn't my fault. But ahora como que I have the resources para educarme. Mm. Como que because of your existence, yo soy el que estoy flaqueando con no saber <laughs> like who the other people are, you know, como que tú, you've, tú has como que posibilitado eso, which is, I feel super important. Thanks, Liz, thanks. Hopefully voy a seguir haciendo. Now, si no me equivoco, the first form of contact I have with you in any form of uh, <laughs> when I found your music que creo que era Maono. Were you, are you a part of Maono? Were you a part of the band? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, me and Jen are the the core members. I mean, Carlos is too, but we we had a different basis for a while mm. at different eras. But yeah, uh, like definitely equal parts of it, yeah. Got you, got you. So that was the first contact I had. Did you, I don't remember this. Did you like no, message us on, on Facebook? No, porque simplemente I was just browsing. Oh, that's how you found out about for okay. band. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was this like 2013? No, so for yeah, when I was 2015, 16. Okay, okay. Cuando me band camp. So Okay, okay. It's funny you say that. I thought you were like an early adopter of Bandcamp because like everywhere I go on Bandcamp, como I que wish, en, el, en el Sphere Body, siempre veo tu, tu como que supporter tag. Like uh, I, every, time, <laughs> every time I find a band, I see your fucking icon, dude. I see your profile picture. <laughs> I just recently found out about, um, I mean, I knew about them, but I never checked out their music. Uh, Flying Dodo Society. My friend Nav turned me on to them. She was friends with them. And I was like, yo, this band's sick. And I fucking saw your profile pic. I'm like, this dude, you knew. <laughs> thanks, dude. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And Mark, remember that, like, uh, the idea for the podcast being uh, the way back in the MySpace days, como que trying to document everything de la escena. So I tried to go... In a way, I'm a physical hoarder because I have way too many books, but I'm gotcha. also a digital hoarder. So I'm trying to have a big library of music. Okay, I know that I might, at one point, I might disappear. But yeah, but a lot of people in my space. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, banda de ese tiempo, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure que a lot of them might have their yeah. music in Spotify or whatever. But a lot mm -hmm. of them don't. No, you know, and cada rato, and bueno, I'm not going to say a cada rato, but I have seen on more than one occasion, like posts in el grupo de la cena, mm -hmm. uh, where it's just like, yo, does anyone remember this one band from 2006? And one guy's like, yeah, dude, check out this media fire link. I got their whole discount, <laughs> like ripped off their fucking MySpace. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's like, it's scary. You know, I was actually reading a Wikipedia article on the digital dark ages. It's just like, Um, hypothesized <laughs> moment where like file formats are archaic or like media is damaged. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, I guess, I think it's for that sense, like, like, I try to buy or download whatever free download I can I find. get you. I get you. So, right on. It, uh, so, yeah. De esa manera fue que descubrí Maono. So, first off, para la gente que no sepa, ¿qué hace Maono? And uh, what's your um, role in the band? Man, Maono is a is a rock band. Uh, our sound is kind of like it, it draws a lot from the Washington DC sound. It's kind of like an early post hardcore band, pero bien como que tropicalized. Um, like our lyrics, we've always been like storytelling kind of stuff, and really, it's always just been like a fun project. Me and Jan did like we've never tried to like do anything serious or put too much effort into it. So like we, we play occasionally. Um, we were actually planning on touring Florida before um, before COVID. Like we had, like I think I don't know what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I was super hopeful because it was already like late February, early March when we booked these tickets. Mm -hmm. And like so it was we kind of like there's hints in the air that this you know shit was gonna go down. Um, but like COVID totally just like put a nail in that coffin, that tour, and then like now like we're all going separate ways so it's it might be a few a few seasons before maono plays i mean there's always a potential of us collaborating digitally but you know that that remains to be seen how much time we're going to have moving forward yeah yeah so it uh, is in a way it's a fun project como dijiste también por lo que veo it's something that keeps the friendship strong y a la como que 
it doesn't have an end to the bonoma, so it might come back yeah. to now and then. Yeah, already. yeah. Um, a lot of people kind of like, like the word like oh, like break up comes up from time to time, but like I don't know, it's it's never been like because a lot of people go into music and they have like a plan or you know record an album, then we're gonna do this, and like you know they have the blueprint later. It's never been like that. Like me and Dan have always just been driven by like fun. You know, that's always that's always been the the key to it. You know. Yeah, so, so because of that you're right it's weak we're not dissolved or anything it's since it's bendier it doesn't break i know what you mean yeah yeah que tampoco ha sido como que la presión de trying to be the biggest thing in the world exactly yeah like working yeah. you guys up or whatever mm -hmm. definitely nice 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 so ahora que not too long ago i believe it was the last week of february si no me equivoco, yeah right? Yes, I got the Dico Vix Victory Laps. Yes, sir. Cuéntame, how did that come about? Were those like, is that like a compilation of songs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Este, básicamente, como que all those songs I just had like accumulated since like I moved out of my house, basically. So like, de 2018 para acá, just like the the ups and downs of you know growth and young adulthood and all that. Just I, I just accumulate songs. I have a really personal relationship with music. So I've never considered pursuing it as like a career or anything. It's always been kind of for me. So like I had all these songs laying around and I just recently like, like bought a MacBook Pro. Mm. Uh, it wasn't even instantly. It was like three months after I bought it. I was like, wait a second, I can make an album, dude. I have like, the, <laughs> I own the means of production and I have all these fucking songs. Like it's not going to take effort at all. It's going to take zero energy. So that's what it did. Like um, uh, that Christmas break, 20, 2020, after I finished teaching, I just started uh, recording everything, track the guitars and the bass, and I programmed the drums in my bedroom. And then I went to Ryan's house. I don't know if you know Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so Ryan, like he has a home studio and, and he's a parent at the school I teach at. And he was super kind enough to hook me up with like uh, the service of allowing me like sound engineering or mm -hmm. whatever. But like, yeah, he, 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 I recorded vocals at his house because he had the acoustics for it. And yeah, it took really little time, really. It took like, I recorded all of that like in two weeks. Super nice, super nice. De hecho, cuando vi a Ryan en los credits, me sorprendí. Small, small, small world. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, es que Puerto Rico es tan, it's so small, dude. Like, it's, it's impossible to like avoid some sort of cross pollinization. Y me encantó también because, yeah. Para la gente que lo conoce, he does hip hop. Y a veces mm -hmm. blends in a few elements of like reggae or whatever. Mm -hmm. no, me lo, no me lo hubiese imaginado como que <laughs> trabajando on a punk slash, yeah. punk slash math rock. Yeah, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it was just, it's just a matter of like friendship and connection. You know, it had nothing to do with like we knew each other from, from you know, I love his music. He's, he makes really good music. But it's that's not how we connected. We just met each other because, you know, he's a parent at the school. I'm a teacher at the school. Super nice, 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 nice. Again, me encanta que fue super orgánico, friendship. Yeah, full, full. Um, yeah, I don't know what would have happened if I didn't have him. Maybe I would have just recorded it in like my closet. I would have figured something out. Uh -huh. But it was nice to have like someone who knew what they were doing monitoring the decibels because it sucks like going to your computer, hitting record, you know, like moving, like switching your, your perspective to record whatever. It's always nice to have someone like like working the computer. Yeah, yeah, or, you know, quizá era hasta te hubiese dado como que, me imagino que te dio como que feedback on some songs or whatever. Yeah, he did, definitely, yeah. Um, definitely, there was also, like, some feedback on on breath and stuff like that, you know, which is a lot helpful. Obligado, obligado. So, el proyecto mismo lo dice among the genres that you explore are indie, punk, and math rock. Eh, asumo que those are, like, the trifecta that have helped you define your sound across since you were a fan of music yeah. until you were creative yeah i don't know i mean if i had to like pick a i don't know because i mean that's what came out on the album but at the same time the album isn't just like it, i don't think i'd go out to make this music i had like all these harmonies and melodies and i thought okay how can i make this in a way my community would enjoy okay so no quedamos con la escena de aquí Yeah, like, it's siempre ha sido como que bien punk-centric. Como mm -hmm. que aquí, el, el punk aquí es la fundación de la escena. 
you know, everyone started off in a punk band, everyone from Dego to Jeff in the West, everyone in the East, they all started in a punk band before they went on to do whatever it is they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I just felt like it was, that's, that's the angle I kind of had to, to, to filter these, these harmonies and melodies through like driving beats, you know, the simple, like short verses and choruses, you know, but um, I don't think that's, I would have gone out to make, like to go for that sound specifically. I just felt that's what like my community would have liked the most. I was trying to make it compelling for my friends, you know? Yeah, de hecho, dice la palabra community and it's very, cuando yo leo los créditos completos del proyecto y toda la cosa, like, yo diría, okay, this is a community project for the community. Yeah, definitely. Like By my North Star is, is like, you know, giving, you know, and, and sharing. Yeah, o sea, o sea, me encanta primero, like, el cover art te lo hizo ahí con la ayuda de Gerardo la foto mm-hmm. great photographer de la gente yeah dude yeah and he, I went to high school with him ah, again super. it's just like yeah, yeah just like another you know one of those things definitely I when when it, I know what you're, what you're getting at like I'm pulling from the community also to help me with it yeah, yeah. so Gerardo ahí eh, los proceeds 50% to Plenitud de Casa Pueblo yeah which again super super freaking nice Eh, lo que I wish I would have thought of earlier, pero you did it, so I, I tip my hat to it. Lo de los shout outs, en verdad que me voló la mente con todos los shout outs. <laughs> yeah, no, and I feel guilty because there's a lot of people I forgot, and like, you know, I, I, in my own like moral code, como que le debía un shout out, but it's like, mm-hmm. oh man, like, so there's been, yo le he añadido después que lo he publicado, like, si se me ocurre alguien hoy, I'm going to add them to that list, you know what I mean? Awesome. Yeah, I don't, I'm sure someone must have done that before, but I don't know. I just feel like the best way to go is just like make as many connections as possible, you know? Um, and it's like, if someone finds out about me, uh, o sea, si yo conozco a alguien, like in my years to come and I share my music with them, hey, estos son otro como que artista que están en la comunidad. And I was, I was sure to include people that weren't just musicians, you know, incluye como que right through a friend of mine who makes cakes, yeah, yeah. aloha cakes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because how like I people. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the shout out. Thank you for the shout out. Too. Yeah, no, thank you, man. Again, like you're providing a service that's important. Is there anyone else besides you that's doing this kind of work? Eh, en la casa se enfoca más en el género urbano. Okay, en la casa. Yeah. I'll have to check them out. En la casa that. PR. Yeah. Eh, deja ver quién más, quién más, quién más. Hola, sí, rapidito. Porque I know other people, pero lo más que hacen son como que reviews sometimes okay yeah. so like podcast reviews or like youtube video podcast reviews, reviews. youtube reviews no he visto pero te envió cuando me acuerdo el nombre yeah for sure let me know hook me up uh, yeah f- of course of course ya que estamos hablando un poquito de la escena um no sé si where you can if you were connected to the metal scene at all pero recientemente falleció eric morales eric olavete yeah yeah i found out about that dude um i have no idea who he is or, or the like the the band he played in um mm-hmm. i had never even heard of them so it just goes to show you how like big the scene can be you know yeah um like como que te lo juro, i've never even heard that band name oh, yeah. um it, were they were they like active in the 90s early 2000s do you know well i think yo supe de ellos because a friend of mine told me about them so okay Sí, me dejó yo por Spotify, they've been active since the 2000s. Pero okay. I have a feeling que they were active since before that. Yeah. Porque tú sabes que aquí pues, se las lanzó ese en grabar, especially back then. Yeah, I understand. So, eh, yo supe de ello when I was a teenager, por el álbum de La Mano de la Muerte. Y from my understanding, toda su discografía ha sido doom metal. Yeah. Y, again, aparte de ese músico, pues, él tenía como que una tienda donde vendían... Disco de metal, merch. Y What was it called, you know? La, la store. Yeah, la tienda. Eh, Odin's Court. <laughs> ¿Dónde estaba? Eh, I think in Calle, porque él era de Calle, si no me equivoco. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. Wow. No, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, de hecho, yo me acuerdo lo conocido cuando chamaco, eh, como era such a kid, but I was fanboying. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> And he, would, 
Yo se vestía como un priest and he would perform y todas las cosas. So. I saw the pictures, yeah. Yo vi una foto de él tocando en, en la respuesta and he was like decked out, man. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's what is so nice to see. Like, again, like everyone has their strengths um, in, in like what they do. People can bring different strengths to like mm -hmm. the same medium. And what he brought was like performance and showmanship. And that's like amazing. You know, that's something I don't have. That's a lot of, that's something a lot of people wish they had. And that guy he yeah, was hitting yeah. me on the head with it. Exactly. So shout out as a family. Hopefully they're doing good despite the circumstances. He will be remembered, especially for his contributions. Por lo menos de mi parte. Um, so ya te dije esto, esto. Okay. So, quedándonos con el tema de la escena, you wanted, me has dicho que te gustaría hablar más de eso, like, is there anything, a good, any topic in specific you would like to talk about regarding the scene? Or? Yeah, man, I just like to, like, just free ball with you and just, like, you know, see what your thoughts, what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses, you know, like, estamos viviendo ahora mismo un, un plague. And afterwards, there's going to be a renaissance, you know, people are going to be <laughs> excited to leave their house and hug people again. So, like, what what can we do moving forward to, like, get our foot in the door, like, as well as possible? Yeah, yeah. but my general sense right now is que sure, it's tan activo, like, people are still putting out music. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. Los artistas visuales, they're still putting out visual art y todo lo que Yeah. Pero va a ser como cuando... Volvimos después de María, que va a ser como que este boom mm, yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I didn't even think about that. Y especialmente cuando se puedan hacer los live shows. Yeah, Porque definitely. Ahí sí que, a pesar de que las bajas han sufrido, porque pues, they have suffered, yeah. I think que once live shows get back into it, la cosa va a explotar. Y there's going to be more shows. My hope es que sigan practicando lo que están haciendo de artistas visuales sigan siendo contactados para que la escena se yeah. siga nutriendo. I know y, exactly. Yeah. Y visuales me refiero like para que hagan covers, para que ayuden con mm. video y toda la cuestión. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, that's exactly one of my hopes also. Y de hecho algo que me dijo este uh, I forgot her name, her group's name, pero lo busco ahora. En lo que busco el nombre del artista, este, ella había dicho algo bien clave, que yo lo sigo considero algo clave. Y yeah. it had never clicked until then. En verdad, me debo haber, tenía que haber pasado antes. Se me pasó por, pues, por no estar más pendiente, pero se debería por lo menos de parte de, de las bandas, mi Osoti Alvarado del Grupo Piquete. Este, ella fue la que me dijo esto. Okay. Que bands should try to imitate a bit of what el género urbano does de okay. doing features. Ah, I know what you mean. Yeah. I get Porque you. Eso es lo que no solamente ha dejado atrás nuestra escena, pero el rock en general, o sea. Yeah, yeah I, I know exactly what you mean. Ese es como que dejar las cosas separar, whatever, como que needs to stop. So, por ejemplo, los otros días, no otros días, a few months ago, vi a Andrea Cruz, who is a singer-songwriter de música folk, okay. colaborar con una banda punk, which I would never imagine seeing, pero gracias a Instagram y mm -hmm. <laughs> taking the, the precauciones necesarias, pues, they were able to yeah. do it. Eh, yo sé que muchos de los artistas urbanos, por ejemplo, creo que Tommy Blanco, uno, like, he used to play in a punk band. Y ahora pues le mete el hip hop trap y whatever. Yeah. So they could do it. Es simplemente cuestión de just be able Yeah, to definitely. Play. And that's, that's another thing. Like, I, I think a lot about like, okay, how can, we, how can we do better this time? And one of the things is like, like shows should have like people like from every genre. Deberíamos incluir gente de, de la escena urbana, like you say. Um, you know, like it's like we're putting all the trouble of making a flyer and like hustling so much on social media. And we're like, we're really just going to have like bands, you know, like I don't think moving forward, I don't think that's the best policy. I think we should do our best to be as like, you know, like, ex like 
capitalize on the fact that we're like making all this this movement to, to make something happen on this one evening from eight to, to 11 or whatever. And like, yeah, including yeah. people from outside of like, what? Yeah. Yes. Hello. That's a little uh, cross genre, multi genre event sort of thing. So we're reading short stories. We should have people reading poetry like outside with a PA between the bands, you know, have like an inside outside dynamic. Like if, if you know, I don't, I'm not into it, but if some people are like live painting, that's a thing, you know, that that's something that could be done. You know, we can find ways to capitalize and make shows a really like, you know, some really, really like dense, nutrient dense sort of like um, dynamic. I mean, like esta ley de promotores that really, really fucked us over. Um, and that's something really important moving forward. Um, but, you know, not considering those hurdles beforehand, like the, the, the philosophy behind show making, like se puede reconsiderar and like, like really improve upon, I feel. Obligado, obligado. De hecho, eh, it's not even a thing of like, este, vamos a hacer la ciudad de cantazo, pero simplemente like experiment with it, see how it goes. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, exactly. Full, full. We don't have to like super commit to like having 80 different things. But yeah. like, hey, maybe we can tell Vuelta Abajo, hey, could you guys do like a super like short five minute production in the parking lot between bands or even give them like a slot, como si fueran una banda. You know, like we yeah, can yeah. we can start cross pollinizing with little effort you know we don't have to go that far out of our way you know it's not, it's not. i even sure. consider just like organizing like um choir and um round and uh, like um canon singing in the parking lot it takes two minutes you just get a bunch of people together who want to sing we can yeah. see row row our row row your boat and fucking like displaced by four bars and we have like the sickest like canon choir ever you know yeah, yeah have the yeah, deep yeah, voices yeah. on one side high voices on another and like it's so easy to create art and like <laughs> get shit going you know it just yeah. no toca nosotros como miembros de la comunidad to do it you know and like i i more than anyone am guilty because i go home early you know and i just just want to play and go home you know but moving forward you know even though i'm not going to be here like i'm going to be you know i'm, I'm still going to be interested in investing in the community in the ways i can Yeah, 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 got you, got you. De hecho, me, me encanta que mencionaste Vuelta Abajo, because cuando yo hacen el Circo de la Plaza, that's like exactly. one of the best ways I've seen the tanto medio unirse en un solo evento. Even if it's like yeah, dude. monthly, o sea, es una cosa brutal. It really is. It's something of Marvel. Mm -hmm. Pero I guess que además de que pues Ah, que si no se puede mezclar el hip hop con esto y whatever, o yeah. el metal con esto no pueden crossover. Además de eso, hay que es que también es como que everybody needs to eat type of thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's that's another issue. That's a huge issue. Pero, yeah. I guess que maybe once a month that type of event puede existir. Yeah, exactly. Maybe even like once every other month with like yeah. smaller events or whatever in between. Um, yeah. yeah, but moving forward, it would have to be like super conscious of quality and the spacing in between. Um, but it, you know, it also depends on community owned art spaces, you know, like, you know, shout out to Deco because he was he was creating this relationship at Off the Wall when Off the Wall was like a thing it had this community and it existed because it was paying bands well, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, if you're you're um, you know, tired and uninspired, that kind of scene doesn't happen. But if you're, if you're getting, even though like by like what the standards are, it was, it was like, you know, super bare bones or Spartan, the payment, it was better than anything else going on in the West, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but now that that doesn't exist, you know, like, you know, how does, how does this work moving forward? I feel like if we're at the mercy of, you know, people, venue owners who, who aren't part of the community, mm -hmm. who are just like, at best allowing it to happen and at worst preying on it como que no va a funcionar ¿sabes? algo tiene que pasar que, que se desarrolle some community owned and run art spaces to like create the space to have bands paid you know como que like if you think about el local mm -hmm. like dude you know that's that place still exists for a reason it's existed for like 10 plus years 
because of how important like community owned art spaces are, you know, it, it belongs to the community. It's not some dude, you know, who's, who's, who's out there to exploit the bands at worst, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, que también, por lo menos lo que tenía off en aquel entonces, I think it también que the owner was young and I guess kind of knew what was going on. So que estos otros locales, locales meaning like other bars or whatever, hopefully they are also like attuned to what is going on or have somebody on the side that yeah, knows what's exactly, going on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Porque si no, again, va a ser lo mismo como dijiste. It's going to be either somebody allowing it to happen or somebody who's praying on the band the, or whatever independent artist yeah. is trying to put their name out there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it comes back to, to Ley de Promotore because if we don't have someone in the community with that licensure, we can't legally charge a mm. fee to enter, you know, so we can't do like this crowdsourced type of payment, which is what the community, all like all, all art communities have depended on, you know, like you charge someone five dollars at the door and then you split the pot between anyone, everyone. You can't do that legally now. But it's a lay, you know, that draconian law, you know. It's uh it's gonna fuck over more people. So yeah, I feel like moving forward, it's important to see how we relate to that, whether it means getting as many people licensed just to comply with the law or like directly fighting it um obviously the first one is easier mm -hmm. so that might be the best choice but it takes i think two years three years you know so like you know yeah. it's important for us to start doing this the Antier or last year yeah but uh, who knows mm -hmm. who knows okay. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Lo bueno es que por lo menos te, the internet has served as another space. You're right. You're absolutely a, right. A través de los lives, say on Facebook, IG, or YouTube, whatever. Yeah. Pero jamás se compara estar ahí en vivo. No, definitely not. Yes, yeah, because I mean, you, you have a chat room, so you can like you know, meet people in the chat room, I guess. But it's not the same as, like, buying someone a beer, you know, or asking yeah, yeah. someone for a cigarette. It's a completely different dynamic. So, um, no, but, by yeah. Directly and meeting the band members. Yeah, you're right. You're right. absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, having a merch table. Which, by the way, again, like, in the, uh, in the thought of including people, like, why don't we have, like, people selling merch? Like, you know, like, why doesn't Kafka have a table at literally every show? That needs to be happening. This We have a guy who could totally be selling his prints and stickers and buttons. So moving forward, like, artists, you know, need to be considered in, yeah. in terms of, like, how, how we can incorporate more, like, corners of the community into, into like, our events. Yeah, especially those who have done the flyers or art for the band. Especially. Full, full. Yeah, I'm kind of guilty there because like I make my own flyers and my own art. So easily, like, <laughs> I have no one to collaborate with. I have a, a single coming out soon and I'm like contemplating, should I like hire? I would love to hire someone, but at the same time, like no one can like do, like render my image, my idea the way I know I could. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, ugh, my bad. Sorry, dude. Para que pueda ayudar como se puede, you know, like, esa idea de los shoutouts alone, it's... It's amazing. It's something. It's. I don't feel like it's a big deal. I think it should be standard, but it's. It's something. It's you know, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. De hecho, ahora que la veo, te pregunto, was it inspired by, sabes, cuando no compraba disco y decía thank you to all these artists, y cada band member decía como que thank you mom, thank you artist, blah 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 blah. Man, I mean, yeah, definitely. Just like you know, when you're a kid and you like back when CDs were a thing, you'd buy a CD and you'd see all the people that thank and they're like, yo, I thank God and my family. I was like, like I gotta do that too, you know. Like I'm, I am not like an island, you know. I am a product of my environment and all the people who, who are kind to me, my young, whether it's like they like my music or they just like offer me something to eat you know mm -hmm. like so i i owe a lot to a lot of people so i i, I made sure to like thank as much or, or as many people as i could gotcha gotcha you, i do that in my libro too but no uh, because i love the way that you did it 
Como es que dice el dicho ese, este, you don't steal, you, in, you inspire, algo así, el dicho ese. Great artists. Like the, play, like the idea that you, you just recontextualizing things you've picked sí, up. Sí. Yeah, I, I believe in that full. Like, it's like, I, I mean, if you ask anyone off the street, like, to sing a melody, they're going to sing something in major scale. Like, it's impossible that they'll, they'll sing some microtonality unless they're, like, tone deaf or something. Yeah, But assuming yeah. they have, like, average sense of pitch, and it's because that's what they've been indoctrinated into. That's their, those are the conventions of the music they listen to. It's major scale, you know? Um, and then, like, that's just, like, on a, on a really, like, large plane. But if we're thinking more, like, you know, just, like, a song I make, like, Oh, I, I've heard this melody in like a city pop song before. This chord progression kind of sounds like an at the drive-in song. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's things here and there. And sometimes I just straight up like go out of my way to copy people. Um, like on uh, Cloud Watcher, I, I tried so hard to sound like Mark Paffy or just give that delivery where uh -huh. he's kind of like screaming and rapping, but like it's also like obnoxiously major scale. Then I go like a hint of tone to it, but it's all like super major scale. Super nice, super nice. I love it. De hecho, eh, ahorita mencionaste que, que Maono was sort of inspired by the Washington thing. Yeah, so, I mean, the thing is... In a way, in a way. In a way, we, most of these, a lot of people started comparing us to those bands mm -hmm. after we were a thing. And I, like, I went to check, because I knew about Fugazi, but, like, the bands that follow them, like, I didn't know that, like, so much of what I was trying to achieve had already been tapped into by someone like of all the moments in like musical history like like early 2000s late 90s is like there's this zit guys going on in dc that i that really like i don't know like i i i just identify with a lot yeah you know that's where i've learned a lot of what i practice today in question like podcast books so, from who from, from people in washington Like in yeah, like Ian yeah, Mackay, yeah. yeah. oh, okay. Discord Records, like. Gotcha. El hecho de que Fugazi recorded almost every single live show they did. Yeah. Like, I yeah. found I found out about that other day, and I was like, "Wait, cada banda que Puerto Rico should do that." Yeah, I like, actually do record my sets uh, with an audio recorder, uh -huh. but I just like to go over and hear what, what mistakes I made. Just oh, to, like make a mental. Note. It's kind of like I picked that up from playing Smash. Actually, the idea of like when you get bodied, you record the set to like go over it. Like I was like, that's so smart. Why don't musicians do this? This is super fucking obvious. Come on, okay. yeah, coño. Yeah, yeah. Like I can just like record my whole set and listen to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, like I, I feel like the but this about it. So every banda independent should or artist independent should try to do that. But, yeah, because. For the sake of archival, you think? Por lo menos, por lo menos. Yeah, documentation. I get you. E, yeah. I don't know, put it in some form of Google Drive or algo loco, and eventually yeah. se pone un database. Or you know, we can just like, hacer como que un, like, un ule, un cerrucho, so we can like get our own web domain and just like have everything yeah. like online, like with the laziest web design ever. It's just like a file navigator. Um, and like you can navigate by region, year, Yeah, like yeah. Genre, whatever you know what i mean like we can Probably do yeah. that too you know we don't have to like keep it on a drive it would exactly. take little effort just a little bit of money you know just to exactly. hire someone and then just i don't know figure out a way to upload everything and web design thing like i said como los 90s web design that's what, dude that's exactly what i was thinking i was <laughs> thinking something so spartan y como que super como que low effort You see, I can say on Pegon, like pretty it up a fuego, you know, like it's yeah. something we can all do together, you know. You see, nadie aparece, it's cool. The music's there. It's like, I'm going to super cool. I'm going to write that down. I'm, I'm definitely going to hit you up. Like, I'm, I'm thinking of starting a think tank soon. Mm. Uh, just to get ideas bouncing around because there's like, there's so much to do like you know let's just talk about and find what are what's the lowest hanging fruit what's the easiest thing we can do you know and i think there should be tons of think tanks i think everyone like every like <laughs> everyone who thinks they can do a good job to start a think tank and just bounce ideas between people and see what can be done Thanks, man. 
And that's the thing, like maybe my job is making the ideas and your your job is to, like apply it, you know? You're the one who's going to be remembered in history. Si se da, like, nah, you know, nah. like Fernando set up this website and that's cool, dude, because that's it's that's what it's about. It's about everyone like bouncing off strengths, you know? Because cool. I am, dude, I am, I am super lazy. I do not have the mental energy to do much. I am so fucking lazy, man. Like I have to pace myself to do anything. Like I have this shirt for my band and cool. like, it's been in Photoshop, like open, like the application's been open for like three months now, like just waiting for those final brush strokes. And I'm like, ah, maybe I should just go get Wendy's and, and like, you know what I mean? So like, that's my flaw, but um, that, that it's good to recognize your flaws and where your strengths are and everything. It's super exactly. important. Exactly, exactly. That's a, I think I know somebody, I don't know how available they are, but uh, somebody who I might contact who's doing something similar with, with Puerto Rican poets. Okay. So like compiling. Yeah. Like, and, and making a directory. Yeah. That's super important. From database, the Puerto Rican poets. And, and they're like archiving old, como que de libro yeah. viejo or contemporary artists or everything, literally anything they can get their hands on. I think it literally anything, but, uh, it's super important. See, but I'm going to ask them, uh, I just read a note right here. I'm gonna ask yeah. him how this is about it. Eventually, I said, I don't know. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Maybe everything could be on the same site or database or archive or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least help us with the blueprint. They're going exactly. Yeah, we could just copy paste. It could be like part of a sister site. We have like a site map. And stuff. That'd yeah. be sick. <laughs> my legacy, my legacy. Yeah, dude. Dude, so, dude, it, takes, it takes little effort. Dude. We're just here. We're here like, you know, we're just like crapping ideas out of our mouth. It takes zero exactly. effort. It's so exactly. easy. Exactly. So, uh, te iba a preguntar, ya sacaste Victory Labs, me te que estás trabajando un single. Any other things you have in, in mind for that? Uh, man, so like, I think this is it for me and for the foreseeable future because I'm moving to NOLA and like, I'm going to be doing a very intensive program at a very exclusive university. I don't think I'm going to have time um for much as far as i can see right but uh like in the immediate future i got a t-shirt a set of stickers and a single coming out el single va para una compilación um de artista guadillano que lo está organizando macoyo de los petardos and he's also got his solo project so and yeah i think the deadline's like late march so this is going to be out in people's ears pretty soon super nice super super nice awesome it was solid by mid March, so so I'll shout out. Uh, How's that? Oh, this is coming out by mid March. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Full. So this being said, dude, any artists de la escena con los cuales no puedo colaborar or meet that you would like to collaborate or meet? Oh man. Um, again, I'm not like the most educated person when it comes to like who everyone around me is. And that leads to my laziness, you know, <laughs> that's something I need to work on. That's something I, as an individual in the scene need to do, you know, as part of my community's health. But, um, my good friend, um, Malayong, I don't know if you've heard his stuff. Malayong. Nah, I Dude, you have to check him out. That's the thing. He's a secret boss. No one knows about him. I went to college <laughs> with this dude. And he is so fucking sick, dude. Like he he makes <laughs> like I don't I don't even want to like 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 try to describe his music and let's like ruin it, but it's like I guess like like rap. Um but super como que authentico y heartfelt and and like he talks, it's he talks about the shit he goes through, but he does it in such a like tastefully funny way. Mm. It's like it, he he mixes the happy with the sad, and it's it's amazing. And I, I really want to be able to collaborate with him sometime. Um, you know, if you're listening to this, Ma Young, dude, come on, dude, you gotta hustle some more. I'm lazy, but this guy, like, he's so low key. No one knows about him, dude. But he's on SoundCloud. You gotta check him out. It's Mala Young, Y O N M A L A Y O N. Perfect. Um, past that, man, like, I can't, I don't know if anyone comes to mind that I would want to, like, 
like collaborate with, but like, I'm super open to collaborate. If anyone wants to hit me up, like you can find me on Instagram or Facebook, like talk to me and let's do something. Let's make something happen. Um, eso sí, like, yo le he dicho a Kafka, but like, it, I, maybe it won't happen because I like have like a billion possible life choices, but I would love to like design a video game with him. He does all these like mock-ups for like, yeah. like video games that don't exist. And he did one for like a character select screen. I was like, dude, I would love to design a platform fighter with you. Like I love Smash Bros, dude. I am such a fucking Smash Bros junkie. And like, I've always wanted to like, just like design like a game, yeah, like yeah. A, a video game. So like, if I could do that with him, that would be so sick, dude. Like I, I would like, the way I see it is you do the art, I do the music and we would collaborate between each other to do like the character design per se. And then we'd have to find someone to program everything. We'd do like yeah. a three piece, like super simple game. And that would be beyond sick. My luck, eh? That would be super cool in my life. <laughs> and I'm sure that Casca would be super down for that in my life. Yeah, dude. Full. We just have to find someone que estudió en Atlantic and like, to program the game. <laughs> like we have a super como que body squad platform yeah. fighter. It'd be super sick. Obligado, obligado. De hecho, ya que estaba hablando de Smash, este, who's your main? <laughs> uh, I, I mean Roy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so... um. Yeah, I'm, I'm into characters that like um, promote fundamentals. Like Roy, he's he's fast and he hits hard. I can do anything I want. Um, but if I overcommit, I'm fucked kind of thing. I feel that's a good philosophy to live by. So I mean, Roy, you know, like if I get greedy with a dumb ass mess, I deserve getting, you know, I deserve the punish that comes afterwards. Um, so yeah, I used to main Samus super hardcore and, and Brawl and Smash 4 because I love the character. Um, moving into ultimate it was like okay do i really want to main this low tier forever or do i want to pick a viable character so mm. i actually picked the character that really went with my personality um despite he's like an anime dude you know <laughs> like <laughs> not my first pick aesthetically but whatever it yeah. doesn't matter any actually, other first class, i kind of got over the the fact when i was young i thought fighting games were dumb like big strong dudes shooting fireballs at each other that's so dumb but like through Smash was like, okay, this is really deep. This is really yeah. profound and even spiritual on some levels. Like yeah. the process of self-improvement and like, you know, it's, it's you're proofreading your opponent and vice versa. Everyone comes out of it better. Yeah. It's amazing. De hecho, eh, te iba a preguntar, so back in the day, fighting games were not your thing. So what were RPGs or what? Ah, oh, man, what was I into? I was... Once I like picked up a skateboard, I wasn't like too in the video games anymore. It kind of faded mm. out. But I feel like any any franchise had the most staying power. I'd say Pokemon, um, um, Battlefield. Also, I'm I'm a huge fan of Battlefield. Mm. It's like the the chaos and the novelty that arises from that game is crazy, and it's so casual. You know, you just pick it up with your friends and play, and it's oh something new always happens. It's super fun. Um, and then college, my friend William, shout out to William, introduced me to Brawl. And after that, I was just like, okay, this is the only video game I play. <laughs> super nice, super nice. So, Tina Alroy, and who are your other top two? Did you take a Samus? Uh, coming? Can... Yeah, Samus. Um, and that's pretty Samus. much it. I'm actually considering um, switching the Pira because uh, she, she's like uh, Pira Mithra, right? Because she, she allows a lot of space for creativity that roy doesn't have because roy is so spartan like like i can I, like i don't know how to explain it like there's never a moment where i can get away with something like my opponent wouldn't expect or if you're like meaning a low tier or a mid tier people don't know the matchup and like weird shit can happen at any moment you have all these weird confirms like roy's so spartan everyone knows the matchup and like it's super simple you know but with the new character like They've got this weird mechanic with their spot dodge or it's like adds like frame advantage. I don't know. It just seems like like she's Roy-esque in some ways, but she's got some novelty to her that I, I missed maining Samus because no one knew how to counter Samus and they would always be eating Zares in the neutral, you know? Yeah. Yoraimo, I always switch between uh, Link, Ryu, or Cloud. Yo, we should play, man. Do you want to play after this interview? What do you guys want to do? Okay, yeah, let's do it. I'll, I'll, I'll grab a beer and we'll play. Dale, dale. I mean, you just send me your, um, your Nintendo ID later. We can play. Dale, dale. Este, 
¿Cuánto es que faltan que anuncien? Like two or three? I think But, two. Uh, two. I think two. I could who be would, wrong. Who would be like your your dream characters? <laughs> I can't believe we actually started talking about Smash. Seriously. <laughs> Dude, I really don't care. Um, like I'm just interested in that they bring something to the game. Because again, like who, what that character is, what, what they, what their franchise is or what they look like, it is irrelevant. What matters is like what mechanics they bring to the game and how they shake up the meta. Um, you know, I don't know, come what may, like Sakurai can do whatever he wants. Yeah. No. El otro día entrevisté a otro músico, se llama Luis Jiménez. We What's his name? Luis Jiménez. Luis Jiménez. Yeah. He does, por lo que hay por ahora, instrumental music. Okay. Pega mucho con, like, de hecho, video games. Y para ser... Ah, ok. Yeah. Ok. So, este, es lo que no quiere es otro anime character with a sword. That, that's all he wants. Yeah, he's, he might get it. Who knows, dude? I mean, who are the possible contenders? And he was like, Sakura at este punto, he's just either trolling or just having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have, I have like a fear. I have two theories. I feel like Sakurai, like this, moving forward, people are just going to be so like exhausted from the hype cycles of new character. And, this, you know, like how yeah. many more characters are going to break the internet? Like Sakurai knows those days are behind him. So I feel like he's he's going to either like like make Goku the last character for the fuck of it. Yeah, yeah. Or he's going to like um, make an original character, like a completely new original yeah. character for the fuck of it. But, or like he's gonna add himself to the game or something like you know because he's <laughs> i feel like he's always thinking of like what are people not expecting yeah yeah you know and then sometimes when people are like are expecting the unexpected he comes up with the expected you know what i mean yeah like who knows <laughs> who knows who knows what, what what he's gonna do yeah do you like, have any like, like requests who do you want to be in the yeah, last there was a bunch of requests i had before the game even released so you're anything. big in the smash too Not big into it, but I love the fact yeah. that the celebration of video. Yeah, games. yeah, it is definitely. So, eh, yo quería que saliera, por ejemplo, eh, one of the battle toads. Oh, that'd be sick. So, <laughs> I, I could imagine, yeah, it would be like a battle toad, and then their palette swap would be the different toads. Yeah, holy go, exacto. Yeah. Eh, Yeah, I've always been a big uh, Metal Slug fan, so quería one of the characters to be. That'd be sick, dude. That would be sick. Uh, I got Mega Man, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, dude, like a Metal Slug rep, I imagine it would be just like, like they would hold A and they would just fire projectiles, like constantly. Their jab would just be like this. It would be so zony. It'd yeah, be yeah. crazy. But now that you mention it, I have actually like, I have considered that Shovel Knight, not Shovel Knight, um, Hollow Knight would be a super mm. great addition because like I, like, I love the mechanics of that game, how you like, you refresh your double jump if you land a down air. Yeah, yeah. or whatever and like that would be such a sick mechanic he would be so good off stage with like his dash he would refresh his jump it would be really sick de hecho uh, i'm a big mortal kombat fan so that mean scorpion or sub-zero i would you think really that would happen it. you think he'd be able to pull that off i think but a scorpion is not that difficult o sea, quitarle lo de la sangre y... that's the thing yeah i mean they kind of did that with the sweat when they ported it to the snes they made the blood sweat so yeah, maybe yeah. He can make Mario sweat. <laughs> Damn, that'd be funny. <laughs> that would be such a smooth little detail and a shout out to the like every character that gets hit, if they have like exposed skin, like sweat flies, that would be super sick. My legacy. My legacy. Y de hecho, cool. The Scorpion would be the main uh, Mortal Kombat character. Yeah. The other one. He would have like all the swabs. Yeah, yeah. He could have like like Reptile and Sub Zero and all the ninjas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that hard. Yeah, not hard at all. But I would enjoy Sibosirang simplemente for the fuck of it. A spiral just to see how a four leg character. Spiral. Yeah, dude, there's no like quadrupeds in the game. That would be pretty interesting. Solamente uh, I duck hunt. But, uh, I oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. It'd be cool if his mechanic was like his dash animation had like a hitbox. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't his dash stack, just running it was yeah, a hitbox. Yeah. Be cool. They could do some cool shit with, with Spyro for sure. Yeah. Uh, en verdad, lo, mucho de lo que, yo creo que pensé randomly, angry birds. 
Yeah. Yeah. Angry Birds. <laughs> How would that work, dude? They're like, would you control the slingshot? Or? Yeah, I don't know, dude. It, could, <laughs> it had such a huge impact. I know. I, I like those crack shit. Those crack picks. Those are great. Yeah. In fact, the yeah. other day I was thinking like, like if, you know, like Piranha Plant's kind of like a crack pick, you yeah. know, like if they did another crack pick, I think they would pick Pokemon because there's just so many like Pokemon they could pick. And I was thinking like, what if they picked like Slugma? <laughs> like his gimmick <laughs> is that he always has a hitbox yeah. active. Like he just just touching him in the neutral would burn you, and that would set up for yeah. a combo. Something ridiculous like that, you know what I mean? Uh, but like, but I I think it was in melee on the at the end, ponían el juguetito of the character when the pasaba mm-hmm. classic mode. Yeah, yeah, para yeah. Para mí que se sacura y ahora como que he's just playing with his toys. Y... Yeah, and exactly what you mean. It, yeah, uh, after 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 Ultimate, I don't I don't know where the series is going. I feel like what they should do is just make it kind of like Killer Instinct, where the base game is free, or like mm-hmm. League, of, League of Legends. Like if they did that, they could make Smash the biggest esport ever. Like it, it has so much potential, but Nintendo's set in their ways, and you yeah. know, and they're like super anti-competitive or whatever. But moving forward, I feel like like you know, it's the the hype cycles of oh man. Like Ridley's and that's not going to happen ever again. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like who's missing? Who's going to make the internet break besides yeah. Goku, you know? Exactly. Yo creo que como, I think que con Sephiroth fue como que the last. That was pretty internet breaking, yeah. yeah. Like that was that was kind of a left-handed pick. No one imagined that. Yeah. But, uh, quien sabe, maybe Angry Birds might be the ones who. Yeah, that would, <laughs> that'd be cool. And it wouldn't be like the first Swedish game in Smash either, because we have Steve in Smash already. Yeah, yeah. So if we have Andrew Birds in there, a lot of Swedish reps. And I like it. Yo solamente digo por el mobile impact that it had, either Angry Birds or Five Nights. Como que... Ooh, I, I see what you mean, like to represent like the mobile sphere. Well, don't you think uh, Minecraft covers that box? Because like También. most kids first played it on their mom's iPhone. You know what I yeah. mean? That don't even know like. The idea for it, the actual like, mm, I get you. Well, Minecraft represents the new, new generation to some extent. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, Angry Birds or Five Nights at Freddy would also <laughs> do that. I don't know much about Five Nights at Freddy, but I imagine it would just be like the animatronic, like kicking people. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, how would they incorporate like the game mechanics of Five Nights at Freddy? Yeah, tampoco, in this place now. Yeah, go free and Sakurai is a game. Or yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, it. He, he has hero with his menu or whatever. You know, he can find a way to like hint towards the game's mechanics. He'll figure something out. That was another game breaking, the internet breaking, but about how home mainly. I yeah, think. it was. Yeah, it was big in Japan. Yeah, I didn't know how big Dragon Quest was in Japan. I like, I found out after Hero came out. Uh, you know, I had no clue because it's so like, generic you know like mm-hmm. it's you know it's, and if you look at final fantasy like the characters are crazy the character designs is all over the place so you look at like yeah. dragon quest they look so like you know but like sim- aside from being looking crazy se nota el stamp de toriyama like yeah full like just the eyes like you know every a- like there's not a single character that you can tell is akira mm-hmm. but yeah goku goku definitely would be the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'd be, he would be like, como que, the way he sella, sella el, el ultimate's lifespan con brocha de oro. Mm. La pregunta sería, would it be normal Goku, Kaioken, Super Saiyan? I thought about that. I don't know, man. He could literally do anything he wants. <laughs> I think, I don't know, just judging, like, he based Mega Man on classic Mega Man. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. the, the, um, I think he would go for base Goku, right? And then, like, he'd probably have some mechanic where he powers up. Um, he'd probably have some meter, and then, like, you can fill it up to a certain point, and if you activate it, you get, like, was it Kaioken, like, when he turns red? Yeah, Kaioken. Okay, yeah. I, I'm not, I don't know much about Dragon Ball, but I know, like, there's, there's a sequence of power levels. Uh, and, like, depending on how much meter, so you can, like, burst it early, kind of like a V skill or V trigger in, in Street Fighter. Like yeah, you yeah. can choose when to use meter and how much meter, I guess. You could probably do that. 
Y la cosa también sería el smash. Would it be the spirit bomb? Would it be like fusion with Vegeta and then do something? You know, like yeah. Yeah, he could literally, there's so much room to work with. He could literally do anything. Maybe, I don't know. He could, if he did the spirit bomb, it would probably be easier to in implement. They would just like recode like Lucas and Ness's final smash and just like mm -hmm. make it a giant hitbox or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it could work. I don't know. Whatever Sakurai wants to do, it's his game, right? It's, uh, it's been his baby, basically. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to complain. We know whatever. I'm just, I'm just along for the ride. O sea, ya a este punto, ya van más de 80 personajes, right? Or close to it. Yeah, I think we're getting there. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not in the facts or statistics, but I, so, around there, I'm sure. We're close to it, or whatever. Enough characters. O sea, yeah, <laughs> too many characters. Dude. Sí. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I think, I don't think there's any, there's any fighting game with more characters besides like fan made games and stuff. Yeah. O sea, le pasó Marvel vs. Capcom, though, which was a very, a very big How one. many characters did, did uh, MBC2 have? I think it had like 60, a little 60? less. 60? Yeah. Really? Wow, I didn't know. But when we were kids, parecía mucho más. Oh, I get you. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't fuck with Marvel. It's like too, too big brain for me. You know, like I love Smash because it's so simple. Um, but like, I, I cannot fuck with those games, dude. Like, When you watch Evo, and there's like a billion things happening on screen, and the crowd understands what's happening. I don't understand who, how I'm supposed to feel, because sometimes this guy will be eating like a fucking like half health bar combo, and the and the commentators aren't concerned because they know he's gonna bounce back. I don't know when this combo yeah, is gonna yeah. happen. <laughs> this is crazy. That's a game that I think should be ported, okay. Uh, MVC3 and MVC Infinity but okay they were cool but MVC2 was just another monster in itself yeah 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 I know exactly what you mean uh, yeah, they were I forgot. okay the other games that have had bigger rosters some of the Dragon Ball and Kaichi which okay. at, one, at one point I think they had over a hundred but what, was, what system was that on I think PS3, I think. Okay, it was a PS3 yeah. game. Wow, that, I, I had no clue. That's a lot. But I mean, Dragon Ball does also have a lot of characters to, to pick from. Yeah. How do they explain How do they explain the differences in like power level though? Like, because yeah, I'm, like, sure, I'm sure like Krillin is equally viable <laughs> like versus like, I don't know, some of the new characters that are like yeah. God level. Because I like what I was like, I was like, Ponía a Goku, Kid Goku, Goku. <laughs> Ponía la Super Saiyan yeah. versions. So. Yeah, I wondered, I always like, I always thought that when I saw people playing Injustice, like at card shops or whatever, it was like, how does this make sense? Like Superman I was like, oh no, they inject people with, with fucking, um, <laughs> like what's that, what's he, kryptonite? Like, oh, they have kryptonite injections. So like their bloodstream has trace of, it's like, <laughs> well, at least they thought of something, you know, they, they yeah. have an explanation. So there's that. Yeah. That like Superman couldn't stop these people from getting that vaccination. Like, uh, dude, like he's he's got super hearing. Like he didn't hear people talking about like kryptonite yeah. injections. Like he could have he could have nipped that in the bud. I feel like Superman flakio bien duro when he let everyone in the injustice roster get yeah. injected with kryptonite. Yeah, it's better, but you know, gotta gotta make this story work somehow. You gotta make this story work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really like most of that art anyway it's not about people don't really care about things making sense you know like it's, it's it's more about like what you feel you know and how you get there at the end of the day that's what most people appreciate with their art you know exactly, exactly. so dude before we close out where can yeah. people find you and find victory laps um you can find victory laps on my band camp uh it's charliehc.bandcamp.com um if you want to talk to me hit me up uh, i'd love the i'd love to make new friends um you can find me on instagram it's also charlie underscore underscore at um on instagram or you can just look for me on facebook charlie at um and yeah that's that's where you can find me for now um i don't think i'm forgetting anything Yeah, that's about it. Just my band camp, Instagram, and, and Facebook. Awesome. 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 But dude, first off, thank you for saying yes. Yeah, uh, of course, man. 
Thank Never thought I'd be me. interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> Who would interview me? <laughs> thank you for the music. Thank you for supporting the scene. Good, man. I mean, we all we we can all put in our like grain of salt, man. You do you, and I do me, and we're we're doing enough. Exact, exact. The third, mano. Uh, bueno, third and fourth. Third, stay healthy. <laughs> y... <laughs> well, yeah, dude, I'm I'm pretty healthy. I'll I'll I'll, I'll like. Like I, I run, I run every day almost. So awesome. uh, 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 I'm pretty healthy. Awesome. Awesome. And fourth, Mano, eh, good trip. Cuando vaya Panola y... Yeah, dude. Y, igual, dude, if you want to come visit me, let me know. Como que I'm going to always make sure I have like a couch or an inflatable mattress for anyone, any of my friends or acquaintances that wants to come to New Orleans. Awesome. Awesome. I'm lucky I'll take that into consideration. Do it. Awesome. His name is Give you a tour. We can like we can eat po boys, oh, yeah. eat some shrimp, some gumbo. <laughs> we oh, can yeah. do all the things in Nola for sure. Holy, oh, yeah, holy, oh, yeah. listen to good music in the way. Yeah, dude. Like, I mean, it's so ironic because I'm not even going to the city for the music. Like, I I went to I was shopping around for schools, and I went actually I flew out to Tucson to check out the the architecture school at um, U of A in Tucson, but I was just like, this isn't for me. This isn't the perspective, and I was like. Where in the world has gone through literally everything? Gentrification, hurricanes, natural disasters, man-made disasters, sea level rise, and it like everything like crossed it at NOLA. So I was like, that's where I'm applying. Awesome. You know, I had nothing to do with the music. But on a side note, I'm gonna, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna be apparently like every every venue you go to, there's just some dude who's been playing sax for 40 years, and he's just there and he's just like that's the average talent level amongst musicians in NOLA. So like I'm not even considering gigging in, in Nola, dude. I'm not gonna stand a chance, dude. Who's gonna want to listen to me? I mean, you know? maybe you can <laughs> at least appreciate it and then eventually. No, yeah, I'm definitely. I'm gonna take that all in. Definitely, like whatever musical endeavor comes, like after or during, it's definitely gonna bakohel the whatever sounds and smells are gonna be floating around the city for sure. Holy go, holy go. So number is Charlie HSA. Yes, sir. My dude. Thank you once again. Thank you once Thank again. Thank you, man. You're the best. Thanks so much. And we're gonna play Smash later, right? Huh? Go for, go for. We're gonna play Smash yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do it. Bye, <laughs> bye. All right, take it easy, man. Peace. Igual, brother. Igual.